Fiber Show got started because I am a fiber artist and I have been in the Dayton area for mostly all my life and I've never really seen a showcase for fibers. And I feel like the Dayton community needs to know that there's more out there than quilting. And um, when we started, we did a kind of a traditional quilt and then we did some more contemporary. And as the show has grown, this is our third year for it, as the show has grown, we have, you know, expanded and we have kind of gone over the, brain, uh, over the bridge and uh, made it more just a contemporary show, which is where I wanted it to be all along. We have nine different artists represented in this show and each of them brings to them their own niche, um, whether it be paper sculpture, whether it be vessels, whether it be art quilting. And we have this year, we have a lot of paper and mixed media pieces. So you will get a wonderful experience dealing with viewing paper items this year. Anything that is made from plant material is a fiber. And fiber can be spun, it can be punched, it can be, um, it can be dyed, it can be a lot of different things. We're working with fibers that are intertwined, basically. And as they intertwine and they're dyed and whatnot, they become a, a material for an artist to use. Unlike paint that's made by pigments and you stir it up to make the colors you want. So it's a little different process. Scientifically, I have no clue as to how plants and, and wool are completely dyed because I know it's a different process beyond that, I don't really know. But all the artists here have experienced working with their materials for some time and most of them have been artists or have just worked with trial and error their whole time to, to work on fiber. Behind me are four different quilts of mine and this year I kind of went with the nature theme except for the one directly behind me. The one at the top is, is called Urban Garden. I was inspired by old Dayton homes that had beautiful gardens. And uh, next to it is a quilt that was inspired by kind of not a bird's eye view, but sort of a slice view of the land. So it's supposed to look like the different layers of the earth going into the sky. So it's sort of a wonky approach to, to the landscape, but it's kind of what I do. Next to it, this one, I was, I don't know where I've been all my life, but this year I've fallen in love with hydrangeas. And this is called hydrangea. And, um, you know, the background has nothing to do with real flowers, but it's, uh, it's unique to what I do. And then right behind me is a quilt that I made that I used a process where you take black fabric and you bleach it and you always get like a beautiful tan underneath it. So I, I did that and that's in the center of the quilt. And then so that that wouldn't just be a dull, plain dye, dye thing, I took the brightest colors I could find and gave it a lot of energy around it and um, basically just kind of experimented with, you know, the dull and the bright, and, and I, I, do like the, the, I do like that piece a lot. My background in art is that I was a teacher, an art teacher for years and years. Recently, I've had the shows at Rosewood Art Center, and I've also had show uh, a piece at Front Street Gallery. So. I've been showing my work quite a bit around town. Other than that, I have I get commissions now and then and word of mouth. So I work on different things at different times. In reality, I have to get to the bottom of my fabric stash <laughs> because that is something that all quilters do. They love to collect fabric and then you go into it and you find the fabric that, and it's just like, okay, this is the piece that inspires a whole thing. A few minutes ago, I was pointing out to you that I made a quilt of a woman, but then I said, look right here, and there's just a tiny little post postage stamp of a crack 
that was di that dyed in the fabric. The way it was dyed, it had a crack and it looked like a figure and that inspired the quilt. So that's just like one little thing that, you know, will like, inspire me. Sometimes it's big things, sometimes it's small things. You know, it, it's just it's just the way it is. I'm very, I think I'm very much observant of what's going on around me. Sometimes almost too much so because then I'll get home and I'll go, no, what was it, you know? And so each year I have some artists that I know will be um, coming back, but then I also try to have artists that are new to the show. So this year I have three new artists. Jean is a mixed media collage paper artist. Jessica does painting and collage and mixed media. And the, the other one is Charmaine Boggs who has her sienna types. And interesting story, see, Charmaine and I used to teach together at Incarnation. So we've known each other for years and years and we got reconnected, oh, probably about 10 years ago. And now she, I've roped her into doing my art shows. <laughs> um, I feel like the show is very strong this year. Um, it's very colorful. There's lots to see. Um, I was talking to um, a visual artist named Terry Hitt, and he said that when he came to the opening, he said he really had to study the work because it was so interesting how everybody puts together the small little elements into a nice big piece of work. So I thought that that was really a compliment that, you know, there was so much, you know, the big pieces and then the big part view of the work, but then also the small details. I know um, Cynthia's work over here that I'm looking over Maureen's shoulder at, there's tiny, tiny little dolphins sewn into her quilt. And when we saw it the day of the opening and we were really studying it, we knew that it was an underwater scene. So, you know, artists think about things a lot. And, you know, I just, I just hope you all come out and um, see this show because I think it's fabulous. I feel like people who come to see this show will always have an opportunity to see something different. Um, there's always going to be something that, that comes, that that appeals to them. Like for example, my nature theme pieces that, you know, if you love nature, that's going to be your, you know, your, your reason to come. I also try to do figurative things. There's work in the display case that's three dimensional. And, and so I think that everything in the show is so well balanced that it'll be nice for you to come and see the work. This is such a beautiful, airy space. It's hard to describe it sometimes to the artist, the way it's laid out. But I say, basically, think of a panel, then a window and a panel, so that they know how much light is coming in there. I know that this is, is a beautiful facility. We were able to use the auditorium for one of our artist talks. And, you know, they're just so gracious here. So I do appreciate this facility. I've been told that we've been invited back for next year, so we will probably be here and I will start looking for new artists probably in the spring of next year because we want to give artists enough time to get their work done. Because some, I know some of them work six months to get things done for the show and I'm really grateful for that. For this show, I decided to focus on my cyanotype work, which I've been doing since 2020. Um, it's a little deviation from what I used to be doing, which was primarily painting and some photography, but it allows me to combine the two. So my work is primarily mixed media, uh, but everything you see here, with the exception of Cosmic Bird Woman, includes cyanotyped fabrics or papers. Cyanotype is something that a lot of people ask me questions about. It's commonly referred to by a lot of people as sun printing. It's a chemical process. I mix two chemicals together in equal portions and then I use that to saturate the fabrics or the papers that I'm going to work on. I put the objects on top of those papers. It might be a negative from a photograph or objects like you see here with these are ginkgo leaves and I expose it to sunlight for anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour depending on the time of year. Then I remove the objects, wash 
the fabric or paper thoroughly, and that lovely blue color appears. Yes, my inspirations come from nature primarily, um, sometimes from family photos or travel photos. For this particular collection, I actually was really focused on butterflies. Um, partly because ginkgo leaves, when put together, make lovely butterfly shapes that can be painted. And also because I was lucky enough to find a collection of rusted metal butterfly um, objects that are used for patio decoration. Grandma's Garden sells them. And um, I decided I had taken a class in rust printing. So I bought all these butterflies and rust printed papers and fabrics to cut apart and use. And that's what this is. It's a rust print on cyanotype with some stenciling. In my background in art, I actually have been making art since I could hold a pencil and crayons. Um, I didn't have any formal art training and I had some minimal training in junior high and high school because art wasn't uh, a huge thing in Catholic education at the time I was being educated. Um, and then I moved on from there in college. I was thinking about going into the arts, ended up veering into elementary education and didn't go back to art as a career until my mid-30s when I went back to get a master's degree in visual arts education. And then I started teaching art the last 12 years of my career, I taught art. Now that I was invited to be a part of this fiber show, it's gotten me thinking a great deal about things I can now do to incorporate more fibers. Um, I was experimenting with working on silk, which is a whole different kind of medium. I can get these really deep blues with cotton. Silk, the blues are more variable, pale. I've been putting salts and other um, spices on them to alter the colors. And I'm also starting to make my own cyanotype fabrics. Right now, I, I do have a website. It's sadly neglected. I am on Instagram most often as Seabog's Art and a lot of times on Facebook as Seabog's Art. Right now, I am going to have work um, on, on view at the Centerville Police Station Gallery that's sponsored by the Centerville Arts Commission. I'm featured there in September. I also show my work at the Miamisburg Art Gallery on a regular basis. I'll be the, one of the two featured artists for the month of September there at that gallery. I'm here and I do occasionally exhibit with the Dayton Society of Artists and the Tri-Art Women's Society. This piece up here that I call Cosmic Bird Woman actually was the piece that was part of my reconnecting with Kathy Jeffers after a long period of time when we had gone in different directions in our careers. Uh, we had been together at Incarnation School for a brief time. She was my daughter's fourth grade art teacher. And when I went into art many years later, my daughter at that point was actually in college, if not out of college. Um, I took a class that Kathy was teaching at the Dayton Art Institute to get my credentials for the year for my licensure, and this was one of the pieces that I made under her direction, and I'm quite proud of it. Well, I have uh, the Moosley here. Uh, that is one of my friends I've known for almost 20 years and she allowed me to use a picture that she posted on Facebook and I liked that picture and it made me want to do this piece and it represents kind of like her personality like she's very outgoing but she's also elegant and laid back and um, I thought that this could show all of that and I use this ribbon as an open frame just to not close it in completely. So that's the muesli. And then this one I call daydreaming. Originally it was going to be a self-portrait, but I started playing with the face shape. It's just like, feels like she's coming out somewhere and just looking off into the distance. That's what I enjoy with the hoodie. And you don't really see that in a lot of portraits or images and I just really enjoy that. Um, and you'll notice too that she has a golden face. That is a paint that I use that's actually cut with 24 karat gold. So when the light hits it from any direction, it sometimes looks darker or lighter or brighter. And you'll see that on this uh, Soul Sister as well as the selfie portrait. 
This is one that I did of myself at, at, a, at a really good angle. So of course, <laughs> you look the best that you can. I had like a Princess Leia moment. This was after I performed for the city of Dayton during Art in the City last year. I was just feeling really good about myself and I wanted to do this piece here. I just felt like doing a little illustration of a lily. I call this lily, lily of the valley because of the background. It looks like it's the main flower with background flowers. So I, I, I like to use two fabrics, one for the background and one for the foreground. And that's why the images kind of pop. It, it wasn't like I was trying to get involved with fiber art. It's just that there's a retired professor who talked to me about my art and I, I like to collage things. And I really didn't know where I was going with it. And he said, I just feel like your soul is not in it. And I just started thinking about the things that I love. Like I like crocheting, I love illustrating, I like being a little over the top, and I love fabric. And that's how I came up with this series. I've always been into art. If there, even as a kid, if there was a blank wall, it was in trouble. Um, I started blending colors starting at the age of four. I understood perspective early on. It, I entered contests early on. I actually won the local AAA poster contest my senior year, graduating from Patterson. Uh, and then I went into graphic design at the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, where I, it was more about art on the computer. Uh, and, and from there, I kind of just left art by the wayside so that I could focus on everyday work and paying bills. And recently, I've just gotten back into it. I do have an Instagram page, Jessica Exhibits. Uh, that's J-E-S-S-I-C-A-H-E-X-H-I-B-I-T-S. -S -S -E <laughs> um, and I also have a, a Facebook page under Jessica Exhibits, and that's what I call my my like art business is Jessica Exhibit. So <laughs> you'll find me on Facebook, you'll find me on Instagram, uh, and that's about it. I, actually, I feel a little intimidated. Like I said, like I kind of put art aside, and it's like one of those things where you just don't, like when it's next to other works and everybody is just so amazing. Uh, but overall, I do feel happy with what I put out. And I, I feel like I, you know, put my, my heart and soul into these pieces. I can be kind of complicated sometimes. I, you know, I'm even eclectic when it comes to music. You know, I listen all the way from heavy metal to, you know, R&B soul. Um, as far as my art pieces, I do want to mention that I, I do use a hand sewing technique where I, it takes two canvases to complete a piece that I do, from the illustration, uh, sewing the illustration onto the canvas, uh, and then placing the fabric accordingly. So uh, it is a process, but it's an enjoyable process, and the payoff is when the, the pieces are finished, so. Um, Kathy uh, invited me to join this show and the work that I do is um, echo printing. I start out with echo printing which is a natural dyeing process. I take um, real leaves, press them between layers of paper and then it goes into a natural dye bath. So it's the process of the combination of what's in that dye pot and the heat uh, that transfers the leaf pigment onto the paper. Then I take those papers with the leaf prints on them and I embellish them with paint and collage and colored pencils and writing. Uh, this, for this show, I actually added a lot of little weavings because um, I am a former textile designer and so I have this affection for fabric in general. So that's kind of how I got started with this project. Well, I took a couple of workshops in echo printing and I was fascinated by it. It's almost like um, 
like Christmas when you you get a package like when you put those leaf packages in the pot and then you take them out and you're unwrapping them it's like a little magic thing happens you don't really know what you're gonna get but it's like such a wonderful surprise to see the beauty of the leaves printed on the paper and I and it's always fascinated me so I just keep doing it because it's so fun <laughs> I am a, a former like I said a former professional textile designer. I worked in New York City for nine years designing fabric for high-end women's wear. I did that for a long time and I loved it and then I ended up having a family and working in New York City and trying to raise my kids just didn't work. <laughs> so I quit my job, was a stay-at-home mom for a long, long time and so then once my kids were off on their own I've been dabbling in all kinds of different things and um, it just seems like this particular medium just really resonated with me and I just kind of have bloomed from it. Uh, actually it was Kathy who invited me to a um, gallery show at the Woodburn Library and that was kind of where I first start, started like showing my work. I hadn't really done it before and um, so the last year and a half, two years, I've been kind of like doing all these juried gallery shows and art festivals and just whatever opportunity has been coming my way, I'm like, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> well, this past summer, I've done several uh, art shows that were outdoor festival kind of things. It was one was the art on the commons in Kettering. I did. Uh, art on the lawn in Yellow Springs and I also did Art Fest on Maine in Springboro. So those were this past summer. And then uh, I, I currently have a, a show up at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Columbus. Um, and I'm going to be part of the Artery at Front Street starting in November. Um, I also will be doing a show at the Kettering Rec Center and there at the Senior Center and that's in November too. I don't really have a, a website or an Instagram page. I do have a personal uh, Facebook page. It's just Jean Feskin. So I post my artwork and a lot of my family stuff on there too. Um, but I'm really kind of so new at all of this. I haven't really done a website yet, but it's probably one of my next to-do things. <laughs> it is fascinating to see the variety of the artwork that's here, meeting all the other artists that you know are very supportive and sharing their talents with everybody and um, and just appreciating one another's work. Well, I do add a lot of my spiritual uh, life to my work. Uh, when I'm, I make the prints and then when I'm working in my studio, I usually have music on or I'll read poetry or scripture and kind of meditate on that as I'm working. And so I, I incorporate a lot of that into the work. Like there'll be like little um, penciled in messages underneath the leaves or um, it's just kind of like my mental spiritual practice as I'm creating um, and it resonates with a lot of people. So, so today for, the, for this month's display I brought my uh, marigold flower which is which is um, named for my, which is named for my mother-in-law she loved marigolds so I took this piece uh, and hand pieced all around all the, all the shading, all the outlines. And then the blue, of course, represents the sky. And then in the middle, I just added little, uh, you know, like little seedlings that are in the middle of a flower because I used a little trapanto technique on it. So I wanted it to stand out a little bit. Oh, so the guitar, the idea came from uh, someone else I saw that did uh, mosaic, and I thought I could do that in fabric. So I did. I did this in fabric. Actually, this fabric was in my stash with the notes, so it was perfect. So I did the front of it with the notes, and then the back has instruments, and then the other notes are uh, attached to it. I got involved with Fiber Arts by actually Kathy. I was teaching at Dayton Catholic School and they were doing a workshop that Kathy was in charge of. And so, you know, she sort of showed us a little bit about quilting. And then I saw her in the fabric store 
and that was it. That's how I got involved in, uh, in fabric and fabric arts, that kind of thing. I have no art background. I just started sewing when I was, just took eighth grade economics. That was my sewing introduction. So then I made some clothes and that was about it. Um, so then uh, when I retired from the telephone company, I said, what am I gonna do? And quilting is, because I do other crafts. I do crocheting, I do quilting, I knit, and then I do paper crafts, different, you know, different uh, crafts like that, so. I have exhibited in a few different places. I did Woodburn with Kathy. I did this one last year. That's basically uh, where my work is. I don't really do, because I don't really consider myself an artist yet. I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. But I'm gonna work on it. I love being part of this show. This is my second year being part of the show. And um, you all t treat us very, very well. We love it here. So I'd like to continue uh, to be part of the show. It's just great. Thanks. I realize I have a thing for trees. I've been doing a lot of trees lately. I'm still doing trees. Three of them are trees. The other was, is something of a variation on trees, although it's from a slightly different series. I feel like trees have a life. And so my trees tend to have some human qualities to them. Well, they're collage on canvas, so I use a lot of handmade papers and other papers, and then I draw into them as well. I start with a concept or drawing. Um, I start pulling papers that I think I might use for my color scheme, and often the papers I first pull uh, end up, you know, not used at all, but they're a starting point for that. And I uh, start by cutting, tearing, and gluing, and sort of building the composition from the back to the front, pretty much. And when I'm ready to commit, I use a gloss medium, which is an acrylic polymer, and that's actually the adhesive, and it can be applied underneath and on top of a paper. And then I can manipulate the paper as I want to. Well, I have a BFA from Ohio Northern from many years ago, <laughs> it seems. It gets, you know, longer and longer ago and a master's in humanities from Wright State. In between those times, um, I actually met Bing Davis, people who know Bing in this area. I met Bing in Kansas City, Missouri. I lived there and he was there doing a commission. And uh, we met there and he came back to Dayton. I moved to Maryland in the meantime, came back to Dayton, we've reconnected and uh, I'm now part of a group called Women Strong, which is, was co-founded by his wife, Audrey, and Janet Lasley. So I see him quite a lot now, but he mentored me for about a year and a half when I got back to Dayton, which was wonderful, just wonderful. I don't have any gallery representation. I tend to sell by word of mouth, so you can always come to my studio, which is downtown at the Reckworth Company on Monument Avenue. I have a website, which is pippingerart.com. Uh, I have some things on Facebook, if you just Google my name. And then I've got some shows coming up currently. Um, here, um, I'll be showing at uh, Woodburn Library in October and at Dayton Society of Artists in November, December. And then I have some permanent pieces around town at some of the libraries at Children's Hospital and so on. Well, I never thought of myself as a fiber artist until Kathy Jeffers called and said, would you like to take part in this show? And I thought, well, paper is a fiber, so it fits. So it's, I guess in some ways it's a little bit full circle. Um, I don't work with fabric at all, so this, is, this has been fun, you know, thinking of paper in a slightly different way. I think one of the things I want to point out is one of the pieces here, which is up here on the top. And the title is Ico Tree. It's named after my five-year-old granddaughter, Jane Ico. Ico's her middle name. And one day, when she was about three years old, I looked at a picture I had taken of her, and I thought, I wonder if Jane could become a tree. So it turns out she can. So that was a really fun one to do. So that's, that's been a fun one. And then the tree series just continues. There's more, more coming. I bought this piece here today, it's called Preserve Linden. This is a piece about revitalization. So there is a 
small community called Linden that is going undergoing revitalization. And so some of the current residents um, are being displaced and their homes are being renovated and uh, sold for a lot more. And so um, this, just to bring attention to the um, gentrification and everything going on there. This could be any town across America, anywhere. So I wanted to do a piece there um, and this hung in Columbus and it traveled there. So I wanted to also come to Dayton. I started um, quilting at the age of about 13. And I was sewing before then, started making little doll clothes, and then I started making my school clothes. And um, I learned to quilt under the direction of my grandmother, who was excellent. She was very precise about piecing. My grandfather had a very good sense of color. I like to think I got my sense of color from him. And then it skipped my mother. My mother didn't really like it, but um, she had an appreciation. So I was uh, bought a sewing machine at like 13 years old. And I used to hide and sew and then get up and still go to school the next morning and everything. But uh, I've been doing it for many, many years. I used to help my grandparents and then they would make quilts and I would sell them for them. So I've been doing it for many years. It's excellent. It's an excellent honor to be among other artists, not only in fiber arts, but also in fine art. And that is part of my mission, is that fiber art is accepted as fine art, because um, we put just as much work into it as a painter does when we use it. Yes, I do other art. I make jewelry. I've done a lot of different, I do a lot of beading. Sometimes I bead on the quilts. I also make three-dimensional vases, and this is an example of one of them here that I have. I have put about three or four in the show, and they're just um, where I take the fabric, I cut it into the pattern pieces, and then I embellish it, and I do it, and then I sew it together. So there is no substrate here. I like to do a lot of beading, so I bead around the top of them. Um, I also do wearable art, clothing that you can wear, things like that. So a lot of different kinds. I started out in uh, marketing. So I've been doing marketing and sales and I worked for Xerox Corporation for years, but I've always loved working with my hands. And I think just as a child, I just think, you know, that keep your hands busy, it keeps your mind busy and that's good. I do have some pieces in Columbus at the Greater Columbus Arts Council. I don't do much on social media, um, but I am a part of a group called uh, Beyond the Edge Fiber Artists, and then we have a blog spot, and that's all you need to Google is Beyond the Edge Fiber Artists. I just think it's an honor to be a part of this, and um, I just thank you for the invitation. So today I'm displaying uh, works from some different series. The largest piece right here is a piece about nature and it incorporates paper mache sewing patterns that I've sewn into watercolor paper and then also paper clay uh, which is a, a clay that is completely made of paper and when it dries it acts like paper as well. And this piece is, again, inspired by nature. I have some other pieces up on top that are more inspired by systems and how different parts of nature work together. And also I have some pieces over here that are inspired by the disintegration of systems. I have been an artist for a very long time. I went to school at Sinclair Community College and graduated with a degree in fine art with a concentration in sculpture. And then I transferred those credits to the Art Academy of Cincinnati where I got a bachelor's degree in fine arts uh, with an emphasis in sculpture. Um, and while I was working on both of those degrees, I was also sewing a lot. Always, uh, I learned how to sew very young, and so it's something that I keep coming back to. 
I tend to work on several different series at the same time. All of these pieces tend to look similar to each other because I've incorporated circles and I've used a lot of the same materials like sewing patterns and thread. Um, but I also make more intricate sculptures that look like miniature landscapes. Um, and they have tr like trees that are very realistic, but very small. I have a studio at Front Street Art Complex. So I'm there almost every day. They have huge art hops twice a month on the first Friday and the third Sunday of every month. My studio is very easy to find. And in addition to that, so you can go and see me anytime basically, but um, I do display a lot of work throughout the area at different art museums and art centers and, and here. I do have a website and I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So if you look for Art of Alicia France, uh, you should be able to find me wherever you are. I'm quite honored to be involved in this show. Kathy Jeffers saw some of my work and said, you have to be a part. And so um, that's always, it always makes you feel good when people appreciate you and want you to be a part of their, their work yeah, too. Well, this year I've got uh, four pieces. Um, I have this one, which is a needle felt uh, as a robe. And then I've got, um, a couple of things back there. One is uh, put together as a found object. That one's called uh, Goldilocks and the Three Birds. And uh, it's got partial Barbie doll, but it's got a lot of felting in it. It's got some tree roots and everything, but it's a scene of Barbie outside on a rock and cleverly hid in the art are three bluebirds. And so I hope the children of all ages, we'll try to find the three bluebirds. Um, I've got a small one, it's called the burning bush. Uh, it's a combination of what looks like a tree, but it's upside down bittersweet roots and being consumed with flames, which again is wool. And it comes from the Exodus in the Bible with Moses and the burning bush. And so those are the, the three, let's see. Oh, uh, one more, I've got, um, one called Aurora, and it's a Aurora Borealis piece of work. Very little felting in it. Uh, I was encouraged to stretch this year, so it's got some paper mache. It's got uh, the fabric, the whole sky is a lady's blouse that I picked up a number of years ago at a Goodwill store. Yeah, those are the four pieces that I brought this year. I really never know for sure how a piece is going to end up because I don't draw it all out. Um, I found at a uh, thrift store uh, a few years ago a cloak. Uh, it's an Irish cloak and it's a lady's uh, cloak. Um, it's all wool and it was inexpensive. So I got that and I knew I was going to felt something on it. I had no idea what at the time. And then at some point, um, I decided maybe a, like a Native American robe or something to that effect with a theme to it. So, um, and like I say, that was a few years ago, but I started sketching some ideas out and I decided I wanted to have a, a Western scene. Uh, I've never traveled out West, but uh, I read something a while back that said art gives us uh, an opportunity for new space. So I was going to create my new, my own space. And so I wanted a Western scene. On this side, I've got the bull buffalo and down below are, are cows and um, an eagle in the sky. And the way you attach the wool to this, and all of this is wool from our sheep uh, at home, this is a, a, a two needle, uh, needle felting thing and you just take the wool. This is very forgiving. If I take this wool off like this and put it into that place, you just take this and you start poking it in to the fabric. And I'll do this very quickly just to show you, but 
it, uh, it locks in, the fibers lock together. And so in some parts of it, I'll only use one needle, sometimes it's two. If it's a great big area like the sky, this little guy, you can put as many as six or seven needles in it and you just poke it and it interlocks with the fabric. You can interlock it with itself if you like as well. But uh, that's how it, it gets there. It's very forgiving. Like I say, you can pull it off and start over. That's what one of the things I really like because I make mistakes all the time or I change my mind. So uh, yeah, that's how it goes together. These were antler buttons that we put on. Um, I've entitled this one uh, On Any Given Day. And the reason I called it that, on the back side of this is a big eagle. This is all natural colored wool from our sheep, except for the blue and the fire. But in this case, the woods is on fire and the eagle is escaping. He's having a bad day. You know, and lots of times we have bad days, but on any given day, that bad day can turn back to a good day. And regardless of which one we're in, we need to remember that it's going to change probably. And so that, that's why I titled it that. You can make it chaos and calm or, or whatever, but the, that was the thought behind it. Um, it, this one took me a lot more time than I have ever spent on one. Uh, it's big. Um, I'll probably, I don't know, I've got a son in New York that said he wants to use it for a film. Uh, he teaches film up there. Uh, I'll give it to him, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what I'll do with it. But we raise sheep, and I don't know, I just really like when I shear, the, the different textures, there's so many different textures of wool in this. And they respond very, very differently for different things. And a number of years ago, we were over at uh, Yellow Springs at Young's uh, annual um, wool festival. And there was an elderly lady, that tells you how long ago it was, cause I'm sure I'm probably past however old she was then. But anyway, she was needle felting up a, a landscape or something, very loosely done. And I told my wife, I says, I think I can do that with some of the wool. And so that began a long journey. Um, I've got, I, I dye the wool, well I shear the sheep, and then wash the wool, dye it. And uh, I've got, uh, I was telling someone a while ago, growing up my crayon boxes had eight in them. I said if I ever could afford it, I would get at least the 64 box. And so I've got 10 boxes of different colors, and there's at least 12 colors in each box. And so anyway, I have a large box of colors now to pick from. Um, and so I, I enjoyed it. I've always just done it in the wintertime because we were farming after I retired from teaching, we farmed. and. Um, I'd only do maybe one piece a year. Uh, now I'm, we sold the farm, we sold the sheep, so I should have lots of time, if I so desire, <laughs> to, to do that. This one, um, uh, yeah, it had more hours. I like doing little things, but uh, I've, I've given probably more away than sold. Uh, I've had good success in competition. Um, had a few, international wins, which makes this old guy feel good that uh, never considered himself an artist. But uh, I, I get more value out of them from giving them to people that it means something to instead of selling them. The first year that I was invited to come, I was in total denial uh, when they said, we need you as a fiber artist, because I said, I'll come as a shepherd that likes to play with colored wool. Um, last year was uh, one step a little farther than that. And uh, this year, Kathy, who puts this on or gathers the artist, she says it's time to stretch. And so the art 
This year uh, was bigger, but um, it also involved, uh, the other pieces involved a lot more different things that I hadn't done before. But I've got pieces uh, in homes uh, out in Iowa and Arizona and different places, but they're, they're mostly given away. The ones that I've sold were commissioned pieces, and those also have special meaning for those people. I'm, I'm uh, humbled and honored to be invited, and uh, I just love a lot of the work that's here this year. It's, it's really, really neat, and uh, who knows, um, I might someday call myself an artist. <laughs>